Hello and how are you? My name is Mini Bajawa and if you're new here, welcome to Medic Academy, channel where we focus on lectures and content regarding to health and any content or uh, information pertaining to our health status. So in today's class, I'm going to focus on the abnormal chest shape and the different shapes that can develop when a person becomes sick, specifically in the respiratory system. So please keep as we begin, I want us to review that when you want to uh, identify the abnormalities of the chest shapes, you first need to appreciate that there are two diameters that you need to be keen on. And the first one is what we call the anteroposterior diameter of the chest. So the anteroposterior diameter of the chest looks at the diameter from the spinal vertebra headed all the way to the sternum. So this is what will form our anteroposterior diameter. The other diameter that you are looking at is the transverse diameter. So this is the horizontal diameter on our chest, and this is connecting rib to rib, uh, so relating it to give us now the thoracic cavity. So it being said that on a normal person who is free from any respiratory illness, the ratio of anterior posterior diameter to the transverse diameter is supposed to be one is to two, or rather this means the anterior posterior diameter is a half of the transverse diameter. Or you can say the transverse diameter is two times the anterior posterior diameter. So when a condition comes up or a person gets affected by respiratory diseases or illnesses, sometimes this chest can variate or change depending on the state of the illness or the pathophysiology of the illness. So what are these major abnormal chest diameters, I mean chest shapes that you really need to know as a person who is learning respiratory illnesses? So these are the main ones that you will focus on today. So we look at the barrel chest, the pigeon chest or pigeon breast that is also known as pectus carinatum. And then we look at the funnel chest, which is also known as pectus excavatum. So these are the three major chest shapes that you will look at, and this will mark our abnormal chest that are key for us to know in our pursuit for understanding the respiratory illnesses or respiratory disorders. So let's start with the first one that we call the barrel chest. So the barrel chest, most of the time, takes the shape of a barrel, or rather takes the appearance of a barrel uh, shape. So barrel for those who, work, who are in a household, we have the storage uh, items that we have in our, in our houses. And most of the time, the one that is rounded is what we refer as a barrel object, whatever item you will call it. So mostly we, we are calling it barrel because it has the round or circular appearance when you are analyzing the chest shapes, shapes at this particular moment. So what is being required, defined as is that when a patient has a barrel chest, it means they have an enlarged shape, chest with a rounded cross section. So the diameter ratio here is said to change now into a state of one is to one. And it's being said that in this level, the, the anterior posterior diameter increases in such a way that it equates to the diameter of the transverse diameter or the horizontal diameter. So the horizontal diameter becomes equal to the transverse diameter, or you can say the transverse diameter enlarges to become equal to the, to the transverse diameter. So if you look at this chest here, this is our anterior posterior diameter, and this is our transverse diameter. So in the barrel chest, this diameter becomes equal in terms of ratio. So they are equal, giving us the rounded appearance or giving us the rounded cross-section appearance. So at this particular moment, the person has developed a barrel chest. So in which illness do we commonly find a patient developing a barrel chest? So you can find it in a condition known as emphysema, which is a disease whereby there's destruction of the parenchymal tissues by different conditions. You find it in cystic fibrosis conditions. You'll find it in asthmatic conditions. So in all these conditions, our client can can develop a barrel chest. The second condition is what we are calling the funnel chest, also known as pectus excavatum. So this is how this chest looks like. Number one, it has a concave appearance. 
meaning it appears as if the, the front side of the chest has a depression. So at the sternal area, the sternum seems to as if it has depressed inside. So if you look here, this is how the appearance looks like. There's a depression that is caving in or caving inwardly, making it have a sunken appearance. So this chest is also known as sunken chest or the cobbler's chest. So there's a depression that goes in. Now, what this depression does, it reduces our anterior posterior diameter. So for those who are not yet able to understand this, I want to zoom it in so that you can see clearly what we are trying to discuss. So this is the, the relation that we are trying to, to, to demonstrate. So the depression is on the front side here. And on the anterior posterior diameter, there's a reduction because of the caving that is happening on our sternum. So this depression will reduce our anterior posterior diameter, but the transverse diameter remains unchanged. So in which conditions will you find this uh, funnel chest or where do we find it commonly? So you can commonly find it in a condition known as Marfan syndrome. It can also be found in Poland syndrome. It can be found in rickets and it can also be found in scoliosis illnesses. So these conditions mostly is looking at the changes that occur on our vertebral column. So we have illnesses that are orthopedic related and can affect the state of our vertebral column. We can also have conditions that can affect the state of nervous supply to the chest and as a result can lead to relaxation or sunking in of the, of the areas around the, around the sternal angle. So with all this, we end up with a concave or a caved in appearance on our side of the chest, leading to what you are calling pectus excavatum or the funnel chest. So here's a clear. All right. And the last chest is the pigeon chest or the pectus carinatum. So with the pigeon chest, it's being said that this is a chest or an abnormal chest where there's increase in anterior posterior diameter. And as a result, what you will observe on our chest is the protrusion of the breast bones. And the breast bones here, we are looking at the sternum and the ribs. So with the pectus carinatum, there's a protrusion of our breast bones, that is the sternum and the ribs. So because of this protrusion, what happens is the anterior posterior diameter increases as opposed to the excavatum where the anterior posterior diameter was reducing. So because of the increase in the anterior posterior diameter, you find that the person or the patient has a protruded breast. And this is how the protruded breast will look like at the end of the day. So this is what the pigeon chest is. Well, the pigeon chest can develop with different aspects, maybe with injuries or other abnormalities like tumors that can grow and compress on the ribs and protrude. But most of the time also, these are only relating with orthopedic conditions that can lead to different bone abnormalities and protrude the chest or protrude the sternum and the ribs. And that was it for this particular class where we've discussed two main abnormal chests, looking at the pigeon chest, funnel chest, and the barrel chest. And if you like our content, kindly remember to comment, leave us a comment telling us what you like the most or how would you wish us to improve on. Remember to share with your connection and network and also remember to subscribe. And if you're new, once again, my name is Winnie Barawa and this is Medic Academy channel where we focus on content relating to health in all arenas of specialties. So welcome once more and see you in our next class. Bye-bye.